Good morning. Welcome to the Holy Name Parish family, and a special welcome to any guests joining us for our celebration of the third Sunday of Advent. The Advent season is a promise, a time of hope and expectation. Let us prepare and wait and not lose heart. Leading us in prayer today is our pastor, Monsignor John Zenz, assisted by our deacon, Michael McHale. We also welcome the DeWint family, who will be lighting the second candle of our Advent wreath. We encourage you to join in all the spoken and sung prayers throughout today's liturgy. Please refer to the hymn boards on either side of the church for the congregational songs. The readings for today may be found in the back of the hymnal at 999. You're reminded to please silence your cell phones at this time and are now invited to stand and greet one another by name as we prepare to begin this Eucharistic celebration. Processional hymn number 405, Advent Gathering Song number 405. <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This third week of Advent, we are invited to rejoice. We know that joy is something we cannot easily manufacture. It is indeed a gift of God. It happens. We discover it accidentally. The joy of which we speak is ultimately not joy in things or from things, but the joy of relationship with the Lord, with each other. We are here today then to celebrate the joy of the presence of God, aware that sometimes we are distracted and try to find our joy elsewhere, we pause and pray for God's mercy. Jesus, 
you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Strengthen us in holiness. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Lord 
merit for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share, share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? And he told them, Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. As a way of reflecting on joy and joining together both the second reading and the gospel, I'd like to use the phrase, the joy of doing small deeds of love. The joy that comes from all the simple actions that are very important, especially this time of year. Simple gestures of giving of our time, doing something with or for another person. 
As we know, there are many love languages. Chapman speaks about that in his book that many of you, I'm sure, have read. One of the love languages is deeds of service, acts of kindness, ways that we show in very thoughtful deeds something of our love. And we all appreciate it when someone goes out of their way to do something that's very thoughtful. It might be uh, taking us to the airport. It might be buying us some groceries. It might be making cookies. But deeds of love, little gestures. And we also know when we do that for another person, it brings us joy. There is joy in the giving and in the receiving. It's not always about packages or money or things like that, but it's really about deeds of love. And if you think about the whole Christmas story, everything is very understated, and it's about the deeds of love that Mary and Joseph showed to each other and to the child that they were being asked to care for. It's about deeds of love, simple gestures that show that we believe in God, that show we believe in the goodness of other people. And as we get out of ourselves in that fashion of giving and or receiving, we discover joy. Joy comes in the act of service. And really, that's part of what is the message of John the Baptist. He has just been baptizing people, and now the crowds and tax collectors and soldiers, three different groups come up and say, okay, we've confessed our sins, we've been baptized, is there anything else we have to do? They instinctively knew there had to be more than just a ritual cleansing. But now the question is, what's next? And I'm sure we think of that too. Hopefully the people in our CIA, when they finish and get baptized or received in the church at Easter, hopefully their next question will be, okay, how, where do I sign up now to be this or that? That's the way it should be for all of us going through confirmation or whatever sacrament, that we would say, okay, what's next? It's not enough just to receive a sacrament and say, okay, I'm all set. No, it's an ongoing life of conversion. And we show and experience that conversion as we continue to try to follow a certain path. And what does John answer the crowds, the tax collectors, the soldiers? Basically the same response. Do your ordinary things with kindness and goodness. If you have extra clothes, share them. If you have extra food, share that. Don't overtax people and don't bully people. Those are sort of standard lines. He didn't tell them to do something fantastic or extraordinary. Do the ordinary things with devotion and love. Then notice the second half of the gospel. As I was praying over it, I was more struck by the second half because it was as if John himself was saying, okay, I've been telling them what to do. What am I supposed to do? And John recognized, I must tell them I am not the Messiah. I must diminish. I must point the way. I must get ready to fade off the, the stage. And so John is very humble here. And he says, I am not the Messiah. He is coming after. I am just preparing the way. And it was good that John was so upfront. He had a large following, but he didn't want to confuse the people. And he knew in his heart that his vocation, his mission, the deed of loving service for him, the joy he would find would come by stepping aside, by pointing out the Messiah and letting him take center stage. And John was willing to do that. In my own prayer, it struck me that many times in our lives, it is important to be able to let go and to let other people pick up the baton and go forward. I have no plans to retire at all. I hope I can stay here as long as my health and mind permit. But it is important for all of us 
to be detached enough and to say, when, when you want, Lord, I am at your service. I will keep doing deeds of love as long as you give me the energy and the health. But at some point, I'm willing to step aside. Deeds of love manifest joy. Let's think about St. Paul in the second reading. Paul is the one that tells us to rejoice, but remember the context. He is in prison. He's near the end of his life. And he is saying, be joyful. He's writing to the Philippians, a community he loved, and he says, be joyful. And how? By being grateful, by praying, by being consistent, by being kind. It's a beautiful passage. If you have the time, look up Philippians chapter 4. A lot of people like this passage and even use it for their funerals. It's on my list for the second reading for my funeral. And it's really a lovely passage. And even the verses that follow talk about thinking about good things and holy things and that we will find peace when we do that. Anyway, in this context, Paul is reminding us about how we could pray. This past week, someone made an appointment to see me for the sole purpose of wanting to talk about how to pray better. And I was very fascinated that he would take time out of his busy schedule to have this conversation. And he said, you know, I'm in my 50s now and I'm uh, practicing Catholic my whole life and I went to Catholic schools but I don't think I was ever taught how to pray. He said, I pray the rosary. And I said, well, tell me, how do you pray the rosary? And he says, well, I have one of those little books and it gives you a meditation for each uh, bead. And I said, well, you're doing a beautiful job then. But he said, I'm, I'm finding it's not uh, helping me too much. I need something more. What, what's the next step here? And I said, well, maybe keep praying the rosary, but now just let your mind go. And as you take each mystery, the Annunciation, the Visitation, sort of think about that mystery. Let that come alive for you. Just let the Hail Marys be a mantra as you just kind of enter into that story and that scene and how it's happening in your family or in your workplace or in the world at large. I also suggested to him what Paul says. Begin with gratitude. Present your needs to God with gratitude. That there is a reason for joy and gratitude every day. Even if we're suffering pain of body or spirit, separation from loved ones, worry about our health or other things, we can still be grateful. We're still able to worry. We're still able to remember a relationship, even if it's fragile. We're still able to do things. We're still able to collect ourselves enough to pray. That's a good starting point. Be grateful. Be quiet. Be still. That takes a lot of effort to just be quiet. But the Lord speaks, and the Lord will touch us. And sometimes the answer doesn't come right when you're sitting there. It might come later in the day or a few days later, but it'll click and you'll know, oh yes, that's what I was thinking about the other day. Now God answered me. And that's such a peaceful calm that can come upon any of us if we are willing to be grateful, to do ordinary things with devotion and love. We have our penance service coming up this Tuesday night. You might want to think about that. That is a wonderful way to pray. Pray with others. If you can't come or don't feel that you want to come, at least take the little booklet that I prepared about not being afraid. And I give you five little meditations there about not being afraid and taking different questions and characters from the Christmas story and how they had to deal with fear. We all deal with that. And sometimes fear prevents us from being joyful. Sometimes fear prevents us from being thankful. We might want to look at that as well. 
In all of our lives then, these last days of Advent are a precious time to try to do deeds of love, but with deliberate attention to the presence of God in each other, to believe that the Lord is within us, the Lord is in the recipient, the Lord is between us. He is always present. That is the reason for our joy. Joy is not something we can create, but it is something that emerges when we forget ourselves and are more open to gift and mystery. I'd like to draw the homily together with a thought from the Book of Joy. Some of you may have picked that up. It's by the um, retired Archbishop uh, um, from South Africa. I can't remember his name right now. Um, and also the Dalai Lama. And the two of them put the book together, and it's, it's a lovely uh, meditation on joy. They actually met in uh, Nepal, and they, they were able to share times together and reflections together, both in their upper 80s, and they wanted to, to do this as, as a sign for others. And the very last thing they, they say in their book is one example of joy is to be able to wipe the tear from another person's face as they cry. Joy and sorrow are interwoven. And sometimes just to be able to wipe the tear of another person is an act of joy. And when someone does that for us, a moment of intimacy. I'd like to conclude with just a lighthearted uh, uh, thought. And this comes from uh, Cranbrook. Uh, there was a music director there at Cranbrook that uh, was very stern, I guess, I'm, so I'm told, so I've read. And he wanted the choir to sing very well. And you know, some are very heavy handed on the baton. Brandon is not. But uh, they, you know, were very forceful. And so he was upset because they didn't have enough enthusiasm for the music. And so he was famous for this line You will sing it once more, but this time with joy. <laughs> And apparently it worked, but God happily doesn't work that way. He invites us to joy by small deeds of love. And now our friends in our CIA. As you see, we have a very diverse crowd, and you could be part of this nice, diverse crowd, or maybe have relatives that would like to uh, join us in progress. Loving Lord, continue to bless your sons and daughters in their journey of faith. May they come to know, understand, and love you, and show that love in the way that they share the joy of their family and friends and in their workplace. We make our prayer through Christ the Lord. Amen. Together, let us have the joy of proclaiming our faith. The Nicene Creed is on the inside cover of the hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. During these days of Advent, our petitions are shaped around the O antiphons. Beginning with night prayer tonight, uh, each of these days that lead up till next week's uh, celebration of Christmas have a different uh, special title that is used where we call upon the coming Messiah. Our response today is, O come, Lord Jesus, come. O wisdom, breath of the Most High, come and show us how to live. We pray in Jesus' name. O come, Lord Jesus, come. O sacred Lord of Israel, come stretch out your hand and free us. We pray in Jesus' name. O come, Lord Jesus, come. O flower of Jesse's stem, come to our rescue. We pray in Jesus' name. O come, Lord Jesus, come. O key of David, come lead us into the freedom of eternal life. We pray in Jesus' name. O come, Lord Jesus, come. O King of all the nations, joy of every human heart, save the creatures you fashion from the grave. We pray in Jesus' name. O come, Lord Jesus, come. O Emmanuel, God with us, come set us free, our Savior and God. We pray in Jesus' name. O come, Lord Jesus, come for all who are sick and suffering, and for those who are grieving the death of a loved one, that the Lord will heal any pain of separation in their hearts. And for those who have died, that they will live in the perfect peace and the company of the Lord and all the angels and saints. We pray in Jesus' name. O oh, come, Lord Jesus, come the intentions which we hold within our hearts. And on this day, we especially remember Joy Thomas, Chuck Smith, Ann Graff, and Joni Brown. We pray in Jesus' name. O oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. God the Father, hear our prayer. presentation of gifts, we invite you or your children to bring up any food donations you may have for the poor. Please place your gift of food in one of the baskets situated on the side choir steps. Thank you. And please join in singing our offertory hymn, number 412, God of All People, number 412.
and sisters that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Father Almighty. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. May the sacrifice of our worship, O Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that we we already rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant, we pray, that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, and all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, the clergy, religious, and the entire people your son has made, gained for his own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another now some sign of Christ's peace.
takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. join in singing our communion hymn number 395, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. That's cool. 
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Last night we had a, a concert here in celebration of uh, preparation of Christmas and our choir and other instrumentalists and other singers were part of that. And I just wanted to publicly thank the choir for the time and energy and love. And you have a lot of days ahead of you too. So <laughs> once more with love. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in our
our recessional hymn number 409, People Look East, number 409. 